distinguished delegates from India and Russia. It is a great honor and privilege to extend a warm and hearty welcome to each one of you gathered here today. We are truly honored to host the representatives of two remarkable regions, India and Russia, as we come together to forge stronger bonds, share invaluable insights, and explore opportunities for collaborative growth. The coming together of the Indian and Russian delegations is a testament to the power of unity, cooperation, and the shared vision of a brighter future. Both regions have a rich history, vibrant cultures, and diverse economies that hold immense potential for mutual, mutual benefit. By combining our strengths and ideas, we have the capacity to drive positive change, address common challenges, and pave the way for sustainable development. Welcome to the commemoration of UN International Peace Day 2023. This annual event serves as a platform for global unity and awareness, focusing on critical issues that impact humanity. We delve into discussions, initiatives, and actions aimed at fostering positive change on a worldwide scale. As we mark this special day, reflect on the collective efforts made towards a better future and unite in the spirit of cooperation to address challenges that present borders, embracing the theme of this year's Peace Day, which is Actions for Peace, our ambition for the global goals. As we embark on a journey of shared understanding and collaboration for a more inclusive, peaceful, and sustainable world. As a welcoming gesture from India, get ready for a pre-recorded bowling and polling dance experience performed by the students of Ashoka Group of Schools, Ashoka Mark Campus. <laughs> That was indeed a foot tapping performance. Next, from the Russian delegation, get ready for a pre recorded musical extravaganza. <laughs>
was pure melody to the ears. I would like to welcome the guest of honors for the speeches from bilateral sides. First, I would like our esteemed Indian guest of honor, Dr. Priya Ahir, HM of AJ Center Campus, Nasik, India, to say a few words. Thank you so much. Good morning, dear all. Good morning. The performance morning. was excellent. Yeah, namaste. Yes. I'm really fortunate to be with you all today. Dear children and dear everyone, the only language humanity shares today is peace. And peace is something, you know, we all relate today. I'll just tell you a small story. You know, long, long time ago, there was a king and he used to love paintings. So what he did was he just proclaimed that, you know, if uh, all the painters were called and uh, the best painting will get a huge sum of money. The painters were very excited and the theme of painting was peace. Okay. Are you all getting me? Just give me a thumbs up if you are understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, he said that the best painting will get a lot of money and everyone was so excited and the theme is peace. So, you know, the painters took their canvases and started painting. You know, two paintings were shortlisted by the experts. One painting had a calm lake, beautiful mountain, all greenery, right? And the lake was so transparent that the sky, the mountains, you know, everything was like, you know, mirror reflection in the lake. And one other painting, which was, you know, chosen by the expert was, you know, um, you know, all uh, gray mountain, a lot of lightning, you know, torrential rain and the waterfall, which was like very aggressive. Now everyone was like, you know, the best painting will be the, you know, the silent lake. Yes. What do you think? Silent lake or heavy rains and, you know, a gray mountain. So everyone thought that the winner is the beautiful scenery. But the king, he chose the painting which had torrential rain, gray crowds, lightning. You know why, dear children? Because the king saw a small branch coming out of the mountain. And on that branch was a small nest in which the mother birdie was feeding you know, the small birdies and quietly feeding them and they all three sitting in the nest. You know why he chose that painting? See, this is depicting life. There is going to be, you know, a lot of things which are, you know, which are happening around. A lot of chaos, everything happening. But you know, what is there when, you know, to survive? The only thing is the inner peace. If we are, you know, peaceful, peaceful from within, whatever is happening all around, you know, makes no difference in our lives. And this is what we have to learn today. Spirituality is like not going in the mountains and sitting, you know, in peace where no one is there. But spiritual awakening or the peace awakening is when, you know, when there is a lot of trouble, you know, troubles come, troubles go. There are a lot of phases in life. But whatever happens, we all are happy, peaceful from within. So have you understood the lesson, my dear children? Yeah, this story depicts peace. So this is the story which I love the most. And uh, I would like to bless everyone who is who all are present today. And uh, let's hope that the world really, you know, is blessed with one language and that is peace. Thank you so much, dear all, and all the best for today's interventions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your welcoming, encouraging, and inspiring words. I would like our esteemed Russian guest of honor, Marilyn Alexey Yurevich, head of the Department for International Projects of the Movement of the First, to express their thoughts. Vasily is making a short call just to make sure Alex is present. There is some technical problem. Okay. 
Коротко скажу, приветствие. Unfortunately, his phone number is switched off. He's not available. So Vasily will take his turn then, and I will assist him in translation. No problem. Уважаемые участники, очень рад приветствовать вас в нашей программе обмена. Dear, dear participants, I'm so glad to to welcome all of you here today with you with our exchange program. Prio Probagio Hamari Online Exchange Program. Mia Apka Svagat Katehue Medje Bahut Kushe Hore Hihe. There was something which I am not able to translate. Now let me translate uh, the same in Russian, which I just said in Hindu. Очень рад всех видеть. Uh, I'm very glad, to, very see glad to see you all. Yes. Absibika Deikar Majibahut Kushe Hue. I Я уверен, что наше взаимодействие внесет общий положительный вклад в взаимодействие между нашими странами. И готовя к сегодняшнему мероприятию, я вспомнил один из проектов, который мы реализуем наш мир одна семья. I am sure that our common input into this event will bring a lot of uh, success to our common projects. And uh, preparing myself for the event, I just reminded one one project which has been run previously. В этом проекте мы сохраняем и укрепляем дружеские связи с различными странами. In this project, uh, we keep ties and make ties. Uh, more strong with different nations. И мы уверены, что от того, насколько мы знаем и понимаем друг друга, мы действительно сможем выстраивать дружеские взаимоотношения и действительно понимать, что наш мир как одна большая семья. Understanding each one's point of view and uh, expressing each one's opinion on uh, each issue makes it easier to build stronger cooperation and it makes for us easier to understand each other. И желаю всем нам лучше узнать друг друга, выстроить крепкое дружное взаимодействие, сотрудничество в образовательной сфере, культуре, вот в шахматах, как мы уже запланировали, ну и в других сферах. And I wish everyone success in building mutual understanding and strong cooperation in different fields, which is education, culture, even playing chess, which we have already planned for, for coming up events. И выражаю надежду, что делегации из Индии и Белоруссии смогут посетить Россию и лично познакомиться с нашим активом движения умных миротворцев, с нашими школьниками, участниками движения первых. I, and I really wish that uh, it will come true uh, when Indian delegation and Belarusian delegation will come with official visit and uh, we will see each other here in Moscow and then we will be able to start our projects and continue them. И также уверен, что мы сможем обменяться опытом образовательных практик и сможем с ответным визитом посетить и Индию, и Беларусь. And we will be able to exchange educational uh, agenda, and then uh, we will have the answering visit to Indian side. Thank you very much, and I wish you success in today's work. Thank you, Honorable Sir, for your persuasive and eloquent speech. My esteemed delegates, in the spirit of mutual respect, let us embark on a journey of exploration and cooperation as we embark on this presentation round, let us remain committed to the values that the United Nations upholds. Values of diplomacy, collaboration, and mutual respect. May our interactions be characterized by intellectual rigor, camaraderie, and a genuine desire to foster understanding and progress. I would like to welcome the Indian student delegation from Ashoka Group of Schools, Ashoka Global Academy, for the presentation on introduction of UN International Peace Day. I'm Pravit, I'm Lisa Valecha from Ashoka Group of Schools. National days and weeks are occasions to educate the public on issues of concern, to mobilize political will and resources to address global problems, and to celebrate and reinforce achievements of humanity. 
the existence of International Day predates the establishment of the United Nations, but the UN has embraced them as a powerful advocacy tool. Before we begin, let's address a common question that we all must have asked ourselves once in our life. What is sustainable peace? Sustainable peace is in which the majority of people on this planet have access to enough resources to live dignified lives so that they can live in freedom from want and freedom from fear. Peace at its core means friendship and harmony in the absence of hostility and violence. But in truth, peace should be in our nature and when it is, it will reflect in our thoughts, our words, and finally, our actions. Now, I will pass on the presentation to Kafira King Sellers for the further information. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> International Day of Peace is celebrated on the 21st of September every year. This day holds profound significance as it calls for a world free from conflict and violence. It's a moment to reflect on safeguarding the well-being of people worldwide. That is why we as young learners are thought about the importance of peace from a young age and how it will shape our individual character and also the future of society. People across the world celebrate International Day of Peace in meaningful and diverse ways. For example, there is a minute of silence held at noon and interfaith and intercultural dialogues. The Japanese peace bell was cast in 1952 and was presented as a gift to the UN on 8th of June, 1954 from the UN Association of Japan, UNAJ, as a chapter of WFUNA. The bell was cast from coins donated by delegates of over 60 nations who attended the 13th General Conference of the United Nations Association, held in Paris, France, 1951. The bell is a symbol of peace, and on its side are eight Japanese characters that say, long live absolute peace. The bell is housed in a wooden structure resembling a traditional Shinto shrine made from Japanese cypress. The bell was presented to the UN by Mr. Renzo Sawano, a Japanese observer to the UN in 1954, who stated, the bell embodies the aspiration of peace, not only for the Japanese people, but for everyone in the entire world. Thus, it symbolized the universality of the United Nations. The Japanese peace bell is traditionally rung twice a year. It is tolled on the opening, uh, opening day of the General Assembly in September, but it is also tolled on the International Day of Peace. This year, the traditional peace bell ceremony took place on Wednesday, the 13th of September, and remarks were delivered by the Secretary General and the President of the General Assembly. The International Day of Peace youth event was live streamed on UN Web TV and UN YouTube on the 14th of September. I now call upon Anuj Gite to continue the presentation. Thank you, Kafira. The United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 46 over 67 on September 30, 1981, that called for a global ceasefire and the cessation of all hostilities. The first International Day Peace, the Day of Peace, was celebrated on September 21st, 1982. It was later in 2001 that the official date was declared as September 21st. The day is observed with an aim of achieving world peace. The United Nations General Assembly, UNGA, established the International Day of Peace in 1981. It also seeks to build a world where everyone is treated equally, regardless of their race, and the day provides a globally shared data for all humanity to commit to peace above all differences and to contribute to building a culture of peace. 2023 marks the midpoint of implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. The 2023 observance of the International Day of Peace coincides with the SDG Summit held on 18 to 19 September to mark the midpoint milestone. It was the centerpiece of the high level week of the General Assembly. It, responds, it responded to the impact of multiple and interlocking crises facing, facing the world and it expected to reignite a sense of hope, optimism, and enthusiasm for the 2030 Agenda. Premier September 14, 2023. The piece begins with me. Multimedia poem showcase a creative collaboration between 
Congolese peacekeeper and musician Pacific Akilimali, a Nigerian peace advocate and poet Mariam Booker Hassan. See, uh, see Michael Douglas, Nancy Ajram, and others as they join UN peacekeeping in the fight for peace. Let's quickly watch this motivational video. Peace like a smile is a language everyone understands. When anger tries to bury me and the world spins into chaos, I will remember that peace begins with me. When the night engulfs the earth, like the beautiful break of dawn, the stellar rise of the sun, I will remember that peace begins with me. Des années à fuir. Des années à espérer. Condamné à vivre. Dans la guerre ou à s'exiler. Pourtant, une fois on m'a dit. La paix commence par toi, petit. Alors, je choisis de donner pour mieux recevoir. Close my eyes to better perceive. What would the world be if all hope was lost? For peace is what you fight for. Se battre pour la paix. Comme une bouteille à la mer. Lancé en plein désert. Moi, je propage un message de paix en temps de guerre. Across identities and differences. Over countries and continents. Across colors. And cultures. Wars and scrumptious. It is not hard to choose peace. Peace is a pen writing conviction. Yet a pencil giving you a chance to start all over again. If you choose peace. Choisir. Choisir de garder la paix. Quand tout ce qu'on a connu, c'est la guerre. J'ai vu des gens venir de partout dans le monde, laissant leur famille, leur confort. Et quand je vois les engagements, je me dis, j'y croirai jusqu'au bout. La paix, elle est fragile. Mais ma dévotion est solide. Je lui dédierai ma vie. And just like that, I know that peace begins with me. Si la paix commence avec moi, alors le futur me surveille. If peace begins with me, then tell the world. I'm ready. I now invite Omisha to continue from here. Thank you, Anuj. The General Assembly, why do we celebrate International Peace Day? The General Assembly voluntarily voted to devote a day to the commemorating and strengthening the ideals of peace, and it has continued since then. This International Day not only strengthens our missions and goals, towards a better world, but also acts as a way of connecting the people and more importantly, the youth. This year, 2023, is special as it is also the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide. International Day of Peace 2023 encourages all youth to be ambitious in their engagement as positive and constructive social agents, to join the movement, to reach the SDGs, and to contribute building a sustainable peace. Together, we can help to lead our world towards a greener, more equitable, just, and secure future for all. We, at Ashoka, also strive for peace within ourselves. We regularly practice meditation during assembly and various events. In the process of meditation, one experiences the unity of the deeper inner self while aware and not sleeping. This experience of the peace and bliss of unity modifies the inner faculty. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Thank you, team, for your amazing and thought-provoking presentation. I would like to welcome the Russian delegation for the presentation on introduction of UN International Peace Day. Good morning, dear participants, for a conference. Peace of you. It is not for nothing that uh, we have wished you all peace today because we would like to start our speech, our speech uh, with the words of the great Russian writer Lev Tolstoy. The evil of war and the good of peace are known to people to such an um, extent that ever since we have known people. 
The best wish has been the greeting piece with you. Здравствуйте, уважаемые участники конференции. Мир вам! Не просто так мы пожелали сегодня вам всем мира. К тому же нашим выступлением мы хотели бы начать со слов великого русского писателя Льва Николаевича Толстого. Зло войны и благо мира – это такой степени известны людям, что с тех пор, как мы знаем людей, самым лучшим пожеланием было приветствие – мир вам. The International Peace Day is a special day in today's society. For never before has our planet needed peace as much as it does today. Международный день мира в современном обществе – это особый день, ведь никогда прежде наша планета еще не нуждалась в мире так остро, как сегодня. The goal of the International Peace Day is, first of all, to achieve a worldwide termination of military conflict and to create conditions for the sustainable development of all countries. This day reminds to all of us the need to strengthen global security and the all nations. Must work together to achieve this goal. Ведь цель международного дня мира – это прежде всего достижение всемирного прекращения вооруженных конфликтов и создание условий для устойчивого развития всех стран. Этот день напоминает нам всем о необходимости укрепления безопасности во всем мире, а также о том, что все нации должны работать вместе для достижения этой цели. For the 42nd time, we, people of different countries, religions and races, have united in a round dance of events to support each other and to say that even if there are fights, we should still speak to each other in a language of friendship. Today, we want to introduce you five interesting facts related to the Day of Peace. Сегодня мы хотим познакомить вас с пятью интересными фактами, связанных с Днем Мира. The first time is that each that holiday was established by the United Nations in 1881. Первый факт. Впервые праздник был учрежден ООН в 1981 году. Fact number two. In 1954, the Japan Promotion Association donated a peace bell to the United Nations. The bell was cast from coins donated by 60 part particip participating countries at the 13th General Conference of the UN National Associations held in Paris in 1951. The bell bears the inscription on life universal peace in the world. Факт номер два. В 1954 году Японская ассоциация Развития подарила ООН колокол мира. Колокол был отлитый из монет, пожертвованных 60 странами участниками. 13-я Генеральная конференция Национальных ассоциаций ООН, входившая в 1951 году, на колоколе находится находится надпись «Да здравствует всеобщий мир во всем мире». Факт номер три. Символом Международного дня мира является голубь мира. Работа Павла Пикассо, где голубь с оливковой ветвью. Он был выбран для Всемирного конгресса мира, так и сохранилось до наших дней. Факт номер четыре. С 1998 The Peace Foundation at the Hague Awards of the Russian Peace Foundation is a sculpture, composition, symbol of peace, as well as the gold medal for peacemaking and charitable activity. Fact number five. Одной из старейших общественных организаций в России является Российский фонд мира, а высшей наградой Российского фонда мира является скульптурная композиция символ мира, а также золотая медаль за мертвую и благотворительную деятельность. It is worth to mention that the International Day of Peace in Russia is a public holiday, because each of us realizes that peace is the main value of our life. The children of our school understand it like no one else, because our school is the 10th of 
43 nationalities, according to the results of 2022, has got a status quo or a war. We have been cooperating with the International Organization ACS for 12 years, which allows us to make friends, communicate, visit each other, and exchange experience with children of all countries. Our friends will tell us about now. Стоит отметить, что международный день мира в России является государственным праздником, потому что каждый из нас понимает, что мир – это главная ценность нашей жизни. Ребята нашей школы это понимают, как никто другой, потому что в нашей школе обучаются дети 43 национальности. По итогам 2022 года наша школа получила статус мира. Мы 12 лет сотрудничаем с международной организацией АФСЭ, что позволяет нам дружить, общаться, приезжать друг к другу в гости, обмениваться опытом с детьми всех стран. Об этом расскажут сейчас наши друзья. Hello, dear friends. We are the students of the eighth class of the Yashki Secondary School number one. Our school has been cooperating with the International Community of Culture and the Tech Russia for 12 years. This cooperation gives us the opportunity to open borders and bring friends in different parts. Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья! Мы ученики восьмого класса Белоярской средней школы номер один. На протяжении 12 лет наша школа сотрудничает с Международным фондом интеркультуры АФС России. Это сотрудничество дает нам возможность открывать границы и заводить друзей в разных странах. АФС is international organization that unites 57 countries of the world and organizes international intercultural exchange of school children. Our cooperation began in 2011 with response to the first AFS students from Italy. ЭФС – это международный фонд, который объединяет 57 стран мира и занимается организацией международных межкультурных обменов школьниками. Наше сотрудничество началось в 2011 году, когда мы приняли первых школьников из Италии. За это время наша школа открывала дверь для 12 школьников и 7 волонтеров из 600 Италии, Германии, Франции, Индии, Таиланда, Венгрии. И отправляли 9 школьников и 4 преподавателя по программе обмена с Индией и Таиландом. In 2019, a group of high school students took part in class-to-class exchange program with India. The year earlier, we hosted a group of school children and a teacher from the Indian children of school. The students got an unforgettable experience of the intercultural communication plunged into the original culture, culture of the Indian people. They represented the culture of the Russian people to dance the national costume, both the, both the stereotype about Russian as the Israeli people and for the own idea of the Indian people to intercultural interaction. Also participated in the national holiday of Indian Congo. В 2019 году группа старшеклассников принимала участие в программе обмена класс на класс с Индией. Годом ранее мы принимали группу школьников и преподавателя из индийской школы Читинат. Ребята получили незабываемый опыт межкультурной коммуникации, окунули самобытную культуру индийского народа. Они представляли культуру русского народа через танец, национальный костюм. Разбивали стереотипы россиян, как не улучшило в людях, формировали свое собственное представление об индийском народе через межкультурное взаимодействие. Участвовали в национальном празднике На протяжении трех последних лет мы продолжаем сотрудничество со школами партнерами через онлайн общение. В прошлом году, к примеру, индийская школа Чатина Тамилнаду предложила принять участие в двух проектах для наших учащихся. Our class was working on the project You Are What You Eat. The main goal of this project was not just to exchange information about the national cuisine of two countries, but to show the world of health and present local nutrition as the basis of healthy lifestyle. As a result, we compiled a food diary in which we showed the usefulness of the national cuisine for our health. We were convinced that the national cuisine of both countries is healthy, nutritious, and even found similar dishes despite the difference between our countries. Because the main motto of the AFS is it's not food or diet, it's just different. Наш класс работал над проектом «Ты то, что ты ешь». Главная цель данного проекта была не просто обменяться информацией о национальной кухне двух стран, но показать ценность здоровья и представить правильное питание как основу здорового образа жизни. 
В итоге мы создали дневник питания, в котором показали полезные национальной кухни своей страны для здоровья. Мы убедились, что национальная кухня обеих стран полезна, питательна и даже нашли похожие блюда. Несмотря на различия наших стран, ведь надо идти с АИБС, это не хорошо и не плохо, это просто по-другому. Ежегодно в нашей школе проходит день межкультурного диалога, который отмечается во многих странах Европы в последний четверг. А ИПС участники со всего мира приезжают к нам, чтобы открыть для себя суровый мороз и теплое соответствие гостеприимства. Но у многих иностранцев существуют стереотипы о нашей стране, которые не имеют ничего общего с реальностью. Наша задача – рассказать миру о настоящей России. Такие мероприятия дают межкультурные знания и приводят к пониманию необходимых культурного диалога. Дорогие друзья, эффект программы учит мир дружить. Вместе мы можем сделать мир. Thank you, team, for your compelling presentation. Next up, I would like to welcome the Indian student delegation from Ashoka Group of Schools, Ashokama Campus, and Russian student delegation from Russia for presentations on importance of international relations and global peace. Gaurika, please see to that you say one uh, delegation at a time. Otherwise, there can be a confusion. Okay? So, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurika. Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which in Sanskrit means the whole world is one family itself. India's relations with the world have evolved since the British Raj 1857 to 1947 when the British Empire took responsibility for handling external and defense relations. When India gained independence in 1947, few Indians had experience in making or conducting foreign policy. So today, students of grade 11 from Ashoka Junior College, Ashoka Mark Campus are going to present on the topic, the importance of international relations and global peace. Today, we are going to cover the following points in the presentation. What is world peace and international relations? United Nations International Peace Day, theories of world peace, importance of global peace and international relations, and the role of India in the promotion of world peace. So basically, what are international relations? Here we go. International relations is the study of interaction of nation states and non-governmental organizations in fields such as politics, economics, and security. International relations are the interactions about among sovereign states. India's international influence varied over the years after independence. Indian, Indian prestige and moral authority were high in the 1950s facilitated the acquisition of developmental assistance from both East and West. Now, the question arises, what is world peace? World peace refers to the ideal state of harmony and collaboration among all the people living on the earth. World peace can be achieved engineering, medicine, or diplomacy used as an end to all forms of conflicts. World peace is the concept of an ideal state of peace within and among all people and the nations on the planet Earth. Various religious and secular organizations have the stated aim of achieving world peace through addressing human rights, technology, education, engineering, medicine, or diplomacy used as an end to all forms of fighting. There are various theories on world peace which we must elaborate on in the next slide. Liberal peace. Liberal peace can be understood as the dominant form of peacemaking and peace building favored by leading states, international organizations, and international financial institutions. Post structuralist theory. Here, peace building is about comprehending disparities and incorporating ordinary people's discourses on everyday peace into international debates in an emancipatory perspective. The constructivist theory, the social construct. The social constructionist approach highlights the role of social interaction, communication, and collaboration in shaping peace. The role of culture and identity in peace building is also emphasized in this theory. Peace psychology. 
focuses on the psychological aspects of the formation, exhalation, reduction, and resolution of conflicts. International relations allows nations to cooperate with one another and to help each other with solving contemporary issues. The United Nations was created in 1945 with one central mission of the maintenance of international peace and security. Let's see some of the reasons why international relations are important. Empowers humanity to better manage challenges and crises. Many people who pursue international relations and diplomacy degrees do so because they have a deep vested interest in making the world a better place regardless of specific career goals. By working together and sharing resources, nations can better manage the effects of crisis such as natural disasters, droughts, floods, famine, and even, even diseases like the COVID, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Promotes cooperation, exchange, and cultural development. The part of an ambassador, lobbyist, etc., the job is to manage the language, culture, and traditions of another country. In this way, countries can better understand and cooperate with each other. This positive effect also transfers to the population because two states that maintain friendly relations can become two peoples that are closely connected and thus share ideas, cultures, and traditions. The most rights of women and children, concepts such as democracy, have successfully and have spread throughout the world through the medium of international relations. Many countries have made efforts to actively spread these ideas and this culture, including ensuring that the rights of women and children are recognized and respected. Promote faster proliferation of the technological innovation. Countries that have good relations with each other tend to share their inventions and innovations more quickly, and this has been the norm among civilizations since the dawn of time. This close cooperation between nations on technological issues has not only made human life easier and safer through developments in medicine, housing, and infrastructure, to name a few, but also has encouraged countries to build closer relationships with each other. Now, let us move on towards the role of India in the promotion of world peace. India stands solidly committed to assist the United Nations in the maintenance of international peace and security with the proud history of United Nations peacekeeping dating back to its inception in the 1950s. India has contributed nearly 195,000 troops, the largest number from any country, participated in more than 49 missions, and 168 Indian peacekeepers have made the supreme sacrifice while serving in United Nations missions. India has also provided and continues to provide eminent force commanders for United Nations peacekeeping missions. India has contributed a lot to the peacekeeping missions of the United Nations. Past missions. The following have been the past missions in which India has contributed since 1950. Korea, 1950 to 1954. Paramedical unit comprising 17 officers, 9 JCOs and 300 other ranks was deployed to facilitate withdrawal of sick and wounded in Korea. Lieutenant General K.S. Thimaya was appointed as the chairman of the Neutral Nations Reparation Commission set up by the United Nations. India also provided a custodian force under Major General S.P.P. Thorat comprising 231 officers, 203 JCOs and 5,696 other ranks. Indochina 1954-1970 India provided an infantry battalion and supporting staff for control of Indochina comprising three states of Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. Tasks including monitoring, ceasefire and reparation of prisoners of war among others. A total of 970 officers, 140 JCOs and 6,157 other ranks were provided during the period from 1954-1970. Middle East, 1956 to 1967, United Nations Emergency Force, where for the first time armed troop contingents were deployed. India's contribution was an infantry battalion and other support elements. Over a period of 11 years, 393 officers, 409 JCOs, and 12,383 other ranks took part in the operations. Congo 1960-1964, ONUC, two infantry barricades comprising 467 officers, 
401 JCOs and 11,354 participated and conducted operations. A flight of six Canberra bomber aircraft of the AIF also participated in the operation. 39 personnel of the Indian contingent laid down in their lives. Captain G.S. Saleria was awarded prosthesis at the Paramir Chakra for action in Katanga, Southern Congo. The bilateral relations between India and Russia have been long-standing. Since the signing of the declaration of the India India Russia strategic partnership in October 2000, India Russia ties have acquired a qualitatively new character with enhanced levels of co cooperation in almost all areas of the bilateral relations, including political, security, defense, trade and economy, science and technology, and culture. Russia also supports India receiving a permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council. In addition, Russia has vocally backed India joining the NSG and APEC. India's long-standing commitment to multilateralism can be reflected in the call for the United Nations. India's multilateral actions have been based on pragmatism since the 1980s. It has worked to advance and protect its core interests through multilateral engagement, to resist or ignore international rules when necessary, and to be open and willing to shape and ratify such rules where national and global interests align. India has taken principled stance on proliferation and weapons control, international trade, climate change, and the United Nations Security Council. India is today in the midst of a major geopolitical repositioning as it discards its old non-aligned movement its policy and build stronger strategic ties with a worldwide range of countries, including the United States and its allies in the region, especially Japan. We would like to conclude our presentation by expressing our heartfelt gratitude toward each, of, each one of you for listening to us and Sagnis sir for providing us the opportunity to meet with you all and boost up our confidence. This presentation was made, made by Ms. Dia Barusani. Master Rishit Prithani and Ms. Riza Shiv. And thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, team, for your informative presentation. Now I would like to welcome the Russian student delegation from Russia for presentation on importance of international relations and global peace. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги, миротворцы, люди доброй воли. В этот день миротворческое сообщество Республики Северной Сети Алания поздравляет с Днем Мира людей, которые сохраняют мир и продолжают славные традиции наших старших дружить, любить и продолжать хорошие дела. Вот здесь у меня есть такая статуэтка, где написано «Миротворец планета в твоих руках». Пусть все люди доброй воли держат землю вот таким образом, чтобы было... Не было войны, чтобы люди могли радоваться жизни. Пусть вот такой голод принесет всем в их дом, в их день радость, любовь, красоту и счастье. Передаю слово нашим миротворцам сводного отряда города Владикавказа. Пожалуйста. Как много несет в себе слово «мир». Человечеству пришлось пройти через огромные испытания, чтобы понять всю ценность мирного неба. Именно по этой причине мы участвуем в этом событии. Для нас большая честь узнать и о вашей деятельности. Хотелось бы вспомнить, как именно был создан этот праздник. Он был учрежден ООН в 1981 году. До 2001 года его отмечали в день открытия ежегодной сессии Генеральной Ассамблеи ООН каждый третий вторник сентября. Затем была определена стабильная дата 21 сентября. В Международный день мира проводится несколько мероприятий. Так звучит колокол мира. Генсек ООН выступает с заявлениями. Также проводятся выставки, семинары, специальные уроки в школах, посвященные этому событию. События последних лет – война, терроризм, военные расходы, глубокие противоречия, разделяющие народ и отдельных людей во всем мире – Климатический кризис, вирусы обусловили беспрецедентную актуальность Международного дня мира сегодня. Причем для достижения истинного мира требуется не только прекращение боевых действий, необходимо построение общества с равными возможностями для всех людей. 
Это предполагает создание мира с одинаковым отношением ко всем людям, независимо от их расовой и религиозной принадлежности. Чем же мы занимаемся? Основная наша работа – чтить память о самых главных событиях республики и страны в целом. Мы делаем все возможное, чтобы принимать активное участие в жизни нашего города. В 2022-2023 учебном году движением юных миротворцев Республики Северная Осетия Алания проведено 43 миротворческих акций муниципального, регионального, всероссийского и международного уровней с общим охватом участников 3436 человек. Таким образом, 36 учебных заведений Республики являются активными участниками междисциплинарной программы движения юных миротворцев и школ мира. Each year, the International Day of Peace is observed around the world on 21st September. The International Day of Peace was established in 1981 by the United Nations General Assembly. Two decades later, in 2001, the General Assembly anonymously voted to designate the day as a period of non-violence and ceasefire. The United Nations General Assembly has declared this as a day devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace through observing 24 hours of non-violence and ceasefire. Never has our world needed peace more. This year's theme is Actions for Peace, our ambition for the global goals. It is a call to action that recognizes our individual and collect collective responsibility to foster peace. Fostering peace contributes to the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals, and achieving the Sustainable Development Goals will create a culture of peace for all. United Nations Secretary, Secretary General Antonio Gattis said, Peace is needed today more than ever. War and conflict are unleashing devastation, poverty and hunger, and driving tens of millions of people from their homes. Climate chaos is all around and even peaceful countries are gripped by keeping in inequalities and political polarization. Together we can help to lead our world towards a greener, more equitable, just and secure future for all. People around the world take part in activities and organize events that are focused on a yearly theme of World Peace Day. Activities range from internet gatherings to public ceremonies and festivals that draw sizable crowds and spread the message of peace. Educational institutions also take the lead in organizing art exhibitions and lessons for students to debate how various cultures celebrate peace and to educate them about past conflicts and wars. Here are a few initiatives you can undertake to celebrate World Peace Day. Now we are going to tell you in what activities you can take part to spread the ideas of peace as we do. Minute of Silent, Moment of Peace, The Peace Way. In 1984, the non-governmental organization Pathways to Peace inaugurated the Minute of Silent on the occasion of World Peace Day. At noon, in each time zone, this observance of silent creates a peace way around the world. You can participate in this shared and practical act of peace building. Post the peace through education. Start building peace in your home with your family. You can teach your kids important peace promoting ideas, including dispute resolution, peaceful communication, consensus building, and the decision to use nonviolence. Participate in a peace march. Join work with others in your neighborhood by taking part in a peace march. There is always power in numbers, connected with other like minded individuals to raise awareness and advise peace in your neighborhood and in the world. Event at school. Plan a celebration for the International Day of Peace at your school. It might be a lunchtime program, a peace walk, an event, evening, or a school-wide assembly by raise awareness of the occasion and promote dialogue among the students. For 12 years, our movement has been celebrated to the day of work. Every year on 21st September, we have a meeting of young peacemakers where we tell a lot of interesting things. There are many presentations and speeches and schools are awarded with certificates. There are also a lot of treats. Such events can be very enjoyable for both children and adults. For most people, peace is an uh, everyday reality, and therefore, the priceless gift of peace is sometimes simply not noticed. However, this is not the case everywhere, and it's very hard. Our streets are calm, our children go to school, however, uh, every year, words claim hundreds of lives. 
including children and women. That's why the International Day of Peach, Peace, which is uh, designed to convey to people the danger of wars, is very important for modern people. I have been in this organization for a long time, and I can safely say that these are the best people I have ever met. They always come to the rescue, and it's always very interesting to be with them. We visit many places and monuments, learn something new. We are fighting for peace. Our most peace. Peace is our Peace is Peace on the earth. Спасибо большое. Thank you, team, for your informative presentation, which has helped open a new dimension towards concept of peace. Dinesh, please uh, turn off uh, first video. I would like to welcome the Indian delegations from Ashoka Group of School, Arjunagar Campus, for presentation. Warm greetings to everyone present here. And I really hope I say this right. Uh, I am Siddhant Amin, the discipline captain of Ashoka Universal School, Arjun Nagar campus. First and foremost, I would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to the distinguished Russian delegates for gracing this gathering with their presence. Now, moving on. Today, we will explore the interconnected topics of conflict, conflict resolution, peacekeeping, and the significance of Indo-Russian relationships. We will also delve into the role of youth in peacekeeping through UN resolution. Welcome to our presentation. Conflicts are a very unfortunate reality in the world, but they can be resolved and prevented through diplomacy and cooperation. Talking about conflicts, it is a fundamental part of the human interaction. It can range from interpersonal disputes to international conflicts. For example, family arguments, labor strikes, or even disputes between nations are all form of conflicts. Conflicts can arise due to various factors such as competition for resources, differing ideology, or territorial disputes for that matter. Understanding these causes is very cru crucial to finding solutions. The resolution to conflict is the process of addressing and mitigating conflicts. This can be done through negotiation, mediation, or arbitration, depending on how the situation is. The most efficient solution, or let's say counter to conflict, is peacekeeping. It involves international efforts to maintain peace and security in regions affected by conflict. The UN peacekeeping missions play a significant role in this. The United Nations play a pivotal role in the global peacekeeping efforts with principles of peacekeeping, encompassing consent, impartiality, and the non-use of force except for self-defense. The, the UN resolution recognizes the importance of young people in peace and security. It calls for the inclusion and decision-making process related to conflict resolution and prevention. Now. I pass on the torch to Yashika to continue the presentation. Thank you, Siddhant. Good morning. I am Yashika and I would like to brief you further about youth in peacekeeping. Young people play a crucial role in peacekeeping efforts. Their fresh perspectives and energy can be harnessed for positive change. Initiatives like youth, peace and security agenda empower them. Talking about Indo-Russian relations, I feel proud to mention that India and Russia have enjoyed a robust and multifaceted relationship that dates back to the Cold War era. This relationship has evolved into the partnership that encompasses a wide range of sectors, including defense, energy, trade, and cultural exchanges. The Indo-Russian strategic partnership is founded on mutual trust and shared interests. Now, I would like to be elaborating more on um, key elements of this relationship. First most key element is the defense sector. India is the largest importer of Russian defense equipment. This includes advanced fighter jets like the Sukhoi Su-30 and T-90 tanks. The annual bilateral military exercises known as Indra strengthen military ties. The next key element is the energy sector wherein Russia is a significant supplier of energy resources, particularly oil and natural gas, to India. The collaboration extends to nuclear energy with the Kundan Kulam nuclear power plant being a prominent example. 
in regards to technology an intergovernmental agreement between the two countries in 1994 was a stepping stone to technological advancements this agreement allows both the countries to set up multiple laboratory and research center in unison cultural and people to people exchanges uh, contacts through cultural exchanges including music dance and literature for for a deeper understanding between the two nations people to people contacts continue to grow through educational exchanges and tourism to elaborate more on indo russian efforts for peacekeeping we have yash with us so over to you yash thank you yashika yes indeed we have had a huge strong bond since decades and with that bond we also have joint efforts in peacekeeping india and russia have been actively involved in international peacekeeping missions under the umbrella of united nations their combined efforts have contributed significantly to the global peace and stability india is one of the largest contributors to un peacekeeping missions but it wouldn't have been possible without the russian support they have helped us by providing us with military equipment and diplomatic backing and it had has been crucial because of this our efforts were successful both nations have expressed the commitment to finding a peaceful resolution to the syrian conflict their diplomatic involvement in peace talk highlights their role as key mediators the stability of central asia is mutual interest to india and russia they have collaborated on regional security initiatives which include counter terrorism efforts and conflict resolution in this strategically important region as peacekeepers we often face challenges such as hostile environments political complexities and resource constraints international cooperation is essential to overcome these challenges and india and russia have been strong supporters of each other helping both of us move ahead with it india and russia have been active in diplomatic efforts to resolve conflicts particularly in regions like the middle east too their influence can be instrumental in finding peaceful solutions to important regional important region like the middle east as we have had a strong relation strong bond since decades we also expect to maintain it in the coming decades too and to do that we have we have taken a very crucial step by deepening our defense ties the defense partnership between india and russia is expected to grow further with the co-production of military hardware and technological transfers also energy remains a priority with india exploring opportunities for additional energy deals with russia both the countries also have a wide influence in regional and global geopolitics advocating for multilateralism and peaceful solution to conflicts india and russia have done a lot of have taken a lot of efforts in having peaceful resolution in conclusion conflicts can be resolved and peace can be maintained through international cooperation youth involvement and strong partnership like the india and russia relation is a strong example of how it is effective under global international peace keeping i would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you for your attentive presence during this presentation your engagement and support has been invaluable thank you for your time and attention thank you thank you gaurika thank you team gaurika before we go yes. ahead there is one video presentation which is pending from the russian side so uh vesely which particular presentation would you like to go ahead with uh, yes uh, just a second the first one yes first one greetings dear participants my name is mark kaiser and i am a student in the diplomatic cadet school today i am going to tell you about the international day of peace in hindi antarashtriya shanti divas ke sthapna 1981 में संयुक्त राष्ट्र महासभा द्वारा की गई थी 20 साल बाद 2001 में महासभा ने सर्वसम्मत से शांति के दिन को अहानसिया की दिन और युद्ध विराम के दिन को रूप में मनाने की निर्णय लिया 2022 में 
अंतर्राष्ट्रीय शांति दिवस का विषय नस्लवाद समाप्त करे शांति का निर्माण करे हमें याद दिलाता है कि कैसे नस्लवाद लोगों के दिल और दिमाग में जहर घोलता है और उस शांति के नष्ट कर देता है जिसे हम जाते हैं नस्लवाद लोगों से उनके अधिकार और सम्मान छीनता है यह असमानताओं और अविश्वास को जन्म देता है और यह लोगों को दूर धकेलता है ऐसे समय में जब हमें अपनी खंडित दुनिया को सुधारने के लिए एक मानव परिवार के रूप में एक साथ आना चाहिए धन्यवाद Now I am going to tell you about the International Day of Peace in English. The International Day of Peace was established by the United Nations General Assembly in 1981. 20 years later, in 2001, the General Assembly unanimously decided to celebrate the Day of Peace as a day of non-violence and a day of ceasefire. The theme of International Day of Peace in 2022 and racism build peace reminds us of how racism poisons people's hearts and minds and destroys the peace we seek racism deprives people of their rights and dignity this gives rise to inequalities and distrust and it pushes people apart at a time when we should be coming together as one human family to repair our broken world For most people the world is an everyday reality and so the priceless gift of peace is sometimes easily overlooked our streets are peaceful our children go to school however this is not the case everywhere every year hundreds of people including women and children lose their lives in war with each military conflict humanity takes a significant step step back because there is so much to rebuild not to move forward that is why the international day of peace which is designed to convey to people the danger of war is so important for modern man thank you i would like to welcome the russian student delegation from russia to present their presentation on peace through conflict resolution this has been a meaningful presentation about the process and the reason writing throughout history peace in the broad sense of the word is the creation of harmonious and just society in which everyone can live with dignity and security so if you this goal of development concept of peace each of which offers its own approach to conflict resolution throughout the history of mankind peace has been thought as a way to end conflict and ensure stability This tradition often views peace as a state of harmonious coexistence between individuals and communities, in which differences are resolved throughout unity, creation, and progress. One of the traditions for peace or conflict resolution is non-violence. Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Nelson Mandela are among the most prominent proponents of non-violence. Have used this concept to achieve significant social and political change. The Indian independence movement. The American civil rights movement and anti-apartheid movement in South Africa are all examples of successful non-violent movements. In the 20th century, the idea of balance of power between nations was seen as an essential factor in maintaining peace and stability, as well as the development of international institutions such as the United Nations. According to the United Nations Charter, the only legitimate way to resolve disputes and disagreements between states A peaceful means that do not endanger international peace and security and justice. Thus, the purpose of peace is to contain conflict. Conflict prevention involves trying to avoid sources of conflict as much as possible. In the second case, when it is not always possible to avoid conflict, disputes are trying to restrain or limit. A civilization tries to prevent the spread of conflict with the help of various degrees of collective power, including the use of force. Thus, The most critical stage in the preservation of peace is social organization. We know that there are several types of public organizations. Family, community, class, state, and tribe are all suitable examples. They all work to maintain peace within the organization. 
It can be argued that organization is a form of internal peacekeeping. In this regard, a striking example is our organization of young peacekeepers whose activities are aimed at educating children and youth in the spirit of culture of peace. The movement of young peacekeepers implementing the interdisciplinary program Network of School of Peace carried out activities to educate children and youth on peace, conflict resolution, and human rights in order to create a more peaceful world. All this became possible thanks to the founders, the leaders of the movement of young peacekeepers, Gergit Valeri Valadimirovich and Ryan Vasily Petrovich, who in different periods were the organizers of the meeting of young peacekeepers, the organizers of the peacekeeping games in Moscow, and the peacekeepers in the CME Anapa. Where we can interact with, with uh, representatives of the different regions of Russia, study culture, traditions, and make new friendships part of reform of meeting. In addition, such meetings allow us to act as diplomats. I know how to resolve international conflicts peacefully. Listen and hear, negotiate, come to a common solution. Another striking example of peacekeeping activity was the International Internet Project 2023, created by young peacekeepers of the gymnasium of Azamas. We are different, and this is our world. We are together, and this is our strength. Where the idea of friendship is laid as the foundation of peace. Nine schools of, world, of the world from Alanya to Tamuksha, Belarus, Kharkiv, Vienna took part in the project. As part of the project, we created the emblem of Commonwealth, where the basis for everyone is the heart and hands. Symbols of peace, love, prospects. It is important that children in our movement deal with these issues because we are youth who can become agents of change in our community and help create a more peaceful world. The gymnasium of city of Arzama is in the regard has many years of experience of how to exchange of students from different countries of the world within the framework of intercultural affairs programs. The main motto of this program is the work of Stefan Galatia. Let's make friends with the children of our enemies. The donation began taking part in the APS program in 2004. This important direction for the gymnasium under the APS program has happened by our teachers as a selfless volunteer and has been doing this for more than 19 years. Since 2004, the gymnasium has participated in the AFS program. Over 19 years of cooperation, more than 40 students from different countries have studied at the gymnasium. This speaks positively about Russia, Arsenal, and our school. Most foreigners have majored and UPI rights their worldview. Teachers, students, host families, everything makes them feel nostalgic and genuinely happy. They realize that Russia isn't what the Western media wanted to be, not to mention the bad stereotypes. For students of gymnasium AFS, the program has also become an inseparable part of the educational process. Now it's very difficult to imagine school without foreign students who can be met in the corridors or listen to their record on the monument in Russian language. The more students communicate with exchange students, the more they understand how important it is to appreciate a person's personality. They include with the ideas of tolerance and humanism. And this is the main idea of conflict-free friendly relations between young people from different countries. I would like to end our presentation with the words of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at the general political discussion of the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly, New York, September 23rd, 2023. I would like to urge Western politicians and diplomats to carefully reread the United Nations Charter once again. The cornerstone of the world order created as a result of the Second World War is the democratic principle of sovereign equality of states, large and small, regardless of the form of government, internal political or socio-economic structure. Today, humanity is again, as many times in the past, standing as a folk in the world. It depends only on us how the story will develop. It is in the common interest to prevent the descent into a major war and the funeral and the final collapse of the mechanism of international cooperation created by generations of protectors. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, team, for your captivating presentation, which has taught us to look over and beyond our differences. I would like to welcome the Indian delegation from Ashoka Gripo School Center campus for a presentation on intercultural peace. A very warm good morning to everyone present over here. I, Saburi Sane, student of grade 10th of Ashoka Universal School Sino, and an Indian delegate, is here along with my friends to share our view of intercultural 
various steps taken by India to strengthen this and its importance in today's world. So, I would like to start this presentation by throwing some light on what does interculture mean. Intercultural describes communities in which there is a deep understanding and respect for all cultures. Intercultural communication focuses on mutual exchange of ideas and cultural norms and development of deep relationship. Now, I would like to invite an Indian delegate, Unnati, to explain how interculture play vital role in India. India is one of a few nation states in the world which qualifies to be called a civilizational state. Indian history is associated with the origin of many great civilizations such as Harappa, Vedic, Indus Valley and the birth of many religions of the world. India also faced recurrent foreign invasions over many centuries, such as from the Greeks, the Arabs, the Turks and the Mongols. From the 12th to about 18th century, a large part of India remained under the rule of Muslim invaders from Central Asia. The British kept it colonized for almost two centuries after that. This political and social uphill, despite being upsetting experiences for its people, have added to the cultural diversity of India. India, India is not limited to a single ethnic, religious or language group. The majority of Indian population, about 80% is Hindu. Muslims are the largest minority group, 13.4%, followed by Christians, 2.3%, Sikh, 1.9%, Buddhists 0.8% and other religious group 1%. In today's globalized world, imparting multicultural education has become one of the most pertinent requirements as classrooms are becoming more diverse and multicultural. Multicultural education is characterized by a teaching and learning environment that acknowledges the cultural differences among students and aims to promote and maintain cultural pluralism. Now, I would like to invite Indian Delegate Shauni to inform us all about what Indian government is doing for intercultural peace. India is among the founding members of UNESCO and has been playing a very active role in promoting UNESCO's ideas and objectives. India has been an active representative on the executive board of UNESCO continuously from its inception to promote peace in India and around the world. India is also the member of Mahatma Gandhi Institute for Education of Peace and sustainable development. Other than this, India has contributed nearly 1,95,000 troops, the largest number from any country, participated more than 49 missions and 168 Indian peacekeepers, have made the supreme sacrifice while serving in UN missions. India has also provided and continues to provide eminent force commanders for UN missions. Now, Indian delegate Shatayu will let us all know how India looked to international intercultural peace programs. Paidam educates, trains, and empowers youth, children, and adults in the values, principles, and best practices of intercultural peace building and peacekeeping skills based on mainly peace psychology in Kashmir. Ufra Mir, the first only Kashmiri South Asian to be a professional peace psychologist and the youngest in the world from her field started Pagam with the goal of creating a more sustainable, peaceful local and global future. Its motto is transforming thinking, transforming lives. Pagam educates, trains and empowers you, children and adults in the values, principles and best practices of intercultural peace building skills based on peace psychology. These skills include but are not limited to conflict, reconciliation, and transformation, trauma healing, stress management, and post-conflict psychological recovery, non-violent communication, mindfulness, art therapy, meditation, leadership development, and facilitation. There are many educational institutions, digital courses, which celebrate World Peace Day to spread its awareness in today's youth. India has taken some vital steps to maintain healthy relationships with other countries and to promote peace. India is a member of several government organizations such as United Nations, the Asian Development Bank, BRICS, 
and G20, which is widely considered the main economic locus of emerging and developed nations. India exerts a salient influence as the founding member of the non-aligned movement. Within the modern era, various cultures influence global trends. We can listen to K-pop, binge in anime and Netflix series and test another country's cuisine without having to fly there. The same can be said for Indian culture. As much as international influences are seeping into India, Indian culture is also making waves globally. It may be hard to define Indian culture because of huge diversity in the country. This includes countless, countless dialects to different styles of cooking, but people all around the world have some sort of idea about the different Indian culture. Perhaps the most widespread culture influence from India will be yoga. You can see how popular it has become just from Prime Minister Narendra Modi's launching of International Yoga Day, as he had requested from the United Nations. More than 100 countries around the world joined in with the yoga participation getting together and diligently posing on their mat. Most likely developed around the 5th and 6th century, yoga has come a long way long. From, from festivals spanning several days in Kerala to Delhi cake delivery during birthdays, Indians know how to celebrate and the rest of the world is following suit. One festival that has inspired several spin-offs around the world is Holi, which is also called the Festivals of Colors. There seems to be something universally appealing in how people joyfully throw brightly colored powders at each other, regardless of age or where they are from. Of course, we cannot leave out Indian food. While each region in India has its own style of cooking and types of food, cuisine is widely known for its intense flavors and richness. Indian food is probably the most obvious global trend, as there are many Indian restaurants all over the world, mainly due to immigration. Far from being unknown terms, you will hear the likes of curry, biryani, tikka masala and naan, casually mentioned during conversations and even in western films and TVs. All these factors of Indian culture have somewhere created love and respect for each other in the world. This was all from our side. I hope the presentation was informative for you all. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you team for your informative presentation. Now I would like to welcome the Russian student delegation from for their presentation on intercultural peace. Dinesh, uh, can you please uh, three third video? Okay, it's Number regarding uh, intercultural, right? Intercultural. Uh, yes, yes. Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Knizhinsky. I study at school number 1786 from Moscow. I am a participant of the movement of young peace builder and peace schools from Russia. Intercultural interaction is an important part of preserving and maintaining international peace. The activities of the movement of young peace builder and peace schools Intercultural interaction also plays a vital role um, in, in order to avoid possible conflicts um, when communication with children from different nationalities. Persons in different countries, you need to know the culture of the person you uh, communication with. In 2020 to 2021, the guys and I participated in the Our World is One Family project, in which representatives of seven states took part. Children from Russia held concerts of uh, Russia folk dance and songs, as well as international creative competition, at which school children from Various countries and people showed their culture. The report will continue. Igor Bezrukov. Hello, my name is Igor Bezrukov. 
I'm studying in a diplomatic cadet school. I will tell you in more detail about an example of cooperation with the Intercultural Foundation of one of the schools participating in our moment, Belayarska Secondary School Number One. Belayarska Secondary School Number One has been cooperating with the International Foundation Intercultural for 12 years. This cooperation gives us the opportunity to open borders between countries and become closer to each other. Today, AFS is the world's biggest voluntary non-governmental organization and the global leader in intercultural learning and global education. It is an international foundation that unites 57 countries of the world and organizes international intercultural exchange of school children. The report will continue. Bronstein Vincent. Their cooperation began in 2011, then they hosted the first AFS students from Italy. During this time, the school opened its doors to 20 school children and 7 volunteers from 6 countries Italy, Germany, France, India, Thailand, Hungary, and sent 9 school children and 4 teachers on exchange programs with India and Thailand. Over the past few years, Belayarska Secondary School No. 1 have continued to cooperate with partner schools through uh, online communication. Last year, for example, the Indian school Ch Chetan of offered uh, to take part in two projects for students of grades 5 and 7. AFS particip participants from all over the world come uh, to the school to discover server frost and warm Siberian hospitality. For many foreigners have stereotypes about our country. They have nothing uh, to do with reality. Our task is to tell the world about real Russia. Such events provide intercultural knowledge and lead to understanding of the need for intercultural dialogue. The report will continue to tell you. Let us tell you more in detail about our cultural interaction with the culture of India. There is a strong tradition of Indian students in Russia. Jawaharlal Nehru Cultural Center, Moscow, maintains close cooperation with leading Russian institutions. About 20 Russian institutions, including leading universities and schools, regularly teach Hindi to about 1,500 Russian students. Apart from Hindi, languages such as Tamil, Marathi, Gujarati, Bengali, Urdu, Sanskrit, and Pali are taught in Russian institutions. There is a strong interest among Russian people in Indian dance, music, yoga, and Ayurveda. JNCC conducts classes in yoga, dance, music, and Hindi for approximately 500 students every month. The Ministry of Culture annually allocates about 11.8 million as grants to more than 20 friendship societies in Russia for the promotion of Indian culture. Currently, the exhibition Incredible India, A View from Russia, which tells how over the course of several centuries, starting with Afanasy Nikitin's walk across three seas in the 15th century, the ending with friendly ties between the USSR and India in the 20th century, the image of the ministry country took shape in Russian culture. Festival of India in Russia was organized from September 2018 to March 2019 in 22 cities at 34 locations with the, participant, with the participation of 10 troops representing various aspects of Indian culture. To mark the 150th birthday anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, the, embass the embassy organized a digital exhibition and a bike ride on October 2nd. An exhibition dedicated to the 150th anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi and his friendship with the Russian writer leader Tolstoy opened in the State Duma of the Russian Federation. The opening ceremony was attended by leaders and representatives of various fields, as well as the special representative of the President of Russia for International Cultural Cooperation. The Embassy in India, in collaboration with the Leo Tolstoy State Museum and the Institute of Orientational Studies, organized a one-day exhibition and scientific conference dedicated to the deep friendship of Mahatma Gandhi and Leo Tolstoy, 
at the Tolstoy Estate in Yasnaya Poliana on September 28, 2019. The exhibition was entitled Tolstoy Gandhi, a story of personal transformation on all continents connected by the endless possibilities of universal love. The event was inaugurated by the Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Mr. Barakash Javadakar. To summarize the speech, we would like to say that intercultural peace is very important and always remains relevant in international relations and in maintaining world peace. Thank you for your attention. Hello, I am a student of school number two. Our school bears the name of Alexander Pushkin, a famous Russian poet. Next slide, please. Next slide. Переключай, Василий. Да, не переключается почему в этом режиме. Сейчас я с полноэкранного тогда выйду. Ну, пусть выступает, я включу. Okay. Okay. I am here to represent the town of Kostanovsky, a small Korean town located in the northwest of Russia. People of different nationalities live in our town in peace and harmony. I will tell you about the life and work of our school of our school peacekeepers club. Our club has a rich history. It began in 1985. Over the years, we have made many friends throughout our participation in competitions, forums, and the project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in 2004, our club joined the Russian organization of young peacekeepers and the life of the club has changed greatly. Since then, we have been participating in the public not only school of peace or sustainable development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our participation in the project, our club has made new forms of social activities. Now we have the opportunity to take part in the events at the regional, national, and international levels. Since then, units of Peacekeepers Club and the groups have appeared in our school. Our students are happy to take part in various campaigns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are also activities organized by the club itself. For example, the so-called Peacekeeping Village. It's a children's summer camp that was held for several years in the ancient Korean village of Bakmalan. There we have a chance to arrange deeds for the residents of the village, including children. The villagers in its turn do their best to share their Korean culture with us, to learn the Korean games, songs, dances, and around them. They talk us to leave roads, they clearly employ school, the shandy, and Kaliki. We did a lot of sports there. For the first time in our life, we played the Korean game Kifka. It is like the old Russian game Garaski. Our unforgettable experience was kayaking on the Fuka Lake and the horse riding. Also, the club has, be, has been the organizer of the international forum of the Forum, Time of the Responsible Couple, the Gathering of Scouts, Day of Youth Community. The club organized three meetings of European youth in Finland. These meetings are new experiences, new skills, and new friend for us. Peacekeeping games, teleconferences, and other significant events have become a common theme in the life of our club. In the September 2019, our town joined the Garden of Memory campaign. We didn't stay away either. The Garden of Memory is not just an option. It is an important step to preserve history. A new war is blood, tears, grief, suffering, and death. This should not be forgotten. In our school, we have lessons of courage, the family management, and meetings with veterans. Our volunteers bring on the territory of the monument in the center of our town. Each of us should remember to tell the terrible pages of the great patriotic war. Our club also takes part in environmental activities. We collect waste paper and other waste things, where plant trees in the schoolyard, in the town, and near schools. For that, the club was awarded a green flag. Next slide, please. A year ago, we were the organizers of the project, the group of the world culture. The idea of the project is to show that we can live together and respect the traditions 
and the culture of other people, of pe peoples of different countries. We invite everyone to talk. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And once more. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Thank you for your listening. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your attention. Nice to meet you again. Thank you, team, for your eye-opening and awe-inspiring presentation. With this, I mark the end of the presentation session. Now, I announce the opening of discussion and question-answer session between Indian student delegation, delegation Fanwick, on topics discussed in presentations. This, the time allotted for this session is 10 minutes. To participate, you may raise a virtual hand on Zoom meet from either side. So students from Russia, the, the Russian delegation, if they would like to ask any question uh, to the Indian delegation side, you can please proceed. Anyone to go ahead with? С российской стороны есть какие-то вопросы к представителям индийских коллег? Любые вопросы, пожалуйста. Thank you very much for your uh, great tips. Uh, we have a question for you. What places in Russia would you like to visit? Okay. A any student who would like to answer from the Indian delegation side? Any, any place you would like to visit uh, in future where we look forward for the interactive uh, session with the Russian delegation? Any student from Indian delegation would like to answer? Please, please remember this is interactive session. Don't be shy. It's very important that you both delegation interact with each other. This is a good opportunity where the Indian uh, delegation would get a chance to have a talk with Russian delegation. So any anyone from the Indian delegation side, uh, if you get if a I chance. May, yeah. yeah. So uh, I would like to visit St. Petersburg. Okay. And why? Uh, so here's the thing. My dad and my mom uh, uh, headed to St. Petersburg for a business meeting. I got jealous seeing their pics. Udhar. <laughs> I mean, for, for the same reason, I'd like to go have a visit, look around. Great, great. <laughs> any, any question from the Indian delegation side towards the Russian delegation? Anything related with the topic or anything related with the culture? May Saburi I? has raised her hand. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, please, uh, please tell us any particular thing which you like about India. It can be any movie, place or food or festival. Any movie, festival or any place you like about India? Any Russian delegation student would like to answer? Кто-нибудь с российской стороны может ответить на вопрос, что вам нравится в индийской культуре, кухне, может быть, о каком-то фестивале, речь, музыка, танцы? Кто готов ответить? Пожалуйста, поднимите руку. This session is not to be shy. This session yes. is to talk. School for uh, School 480. Yes, hello. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Indian culture is very interesting, and I think that there are lots of uh, uh, lovely places to visit. And first of all, my favorite uh, uh, part in India is uh, tr your traditional food, chicken curry, you know. <laughs> I'm a big fan of it. And uh, also, I would like to visit India because there are lots of different uh, festivals, for example, Holi, and uh, I think uh, it can bring a lot of uh, positive emotions uh, to each person and visitor. Great, great. I, I saw a lot of, a uh, couple of students were wearing uh, sari, so they were wearing that, uh, you know, uh, dupatta and sari, so it was really interesting to see the Russian delegation going ahead with that, that uh, thought. It was really wonderful to see. So any Russian uh, student who would like to come up with any question related with the peace or uh, intercultural uh, you know, information 
or anything about the interrelation or international relations anything any question from russian delegation еще вопросы с российской стороны относительно общей темы мероприятия, межкультурный обмен, мир, стабильность в мире и так далее. Не стесняемся, это сессия общения. <laughs> thank you thank you students uh, uh, we are really looking forward that in future if we can have this uh, uh, the student exchange program physically so this is something which we are looking forward where the russian students can come to india and the indian students visiting maybe moscow or st petersburg or the other cities of the russia Uh, so yes, we are looking forward for it. Uh, any 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 question from the Indian delegation? Any any particular question related with uh, uh, the culture or about the international relations or about um, maybe maybe a sports or any anything? Sitan has raised his hand. Sitan. Yes, please. Yes, uh, I'm very curious. I want to know why is. Um... Forgive me if I say it wrong. Uh, it's Meslinitsa festival. Why is it celebrated? What is the significance of it? I would like to know. Кто-нибудь может рассказать, что такое Маслиница и зачем ее отмечают? We can tell about Maslinitsa. A very great. Uh, holiday in our country. We usually uh, bake uh, a lot of uh, traditional foods like green and eat it with different um, uh, jam, um, uh, so cream. Uh, also, we have a tradition to burn um, it's like um, hey puppet. It is a hay puppet. A puppet made of hay. Uh, we burn it uh, in this way. It's like uh, say to us, you say goodbye to your winter and uh, hello to the screen. All right, thank you. Yes, shortly speaking, it is the holiday or the festival of celebrating end of the cold season, beginning of the warm season of the year. Okay, okay. Wonderful. Any 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 question from the Russian delegation? We'll go with one more uh, question on either side before proceeding further for the uh, feedback session. So any any question from the Russian side? На одному вопросу, ребята, еще есть российской стороны кто-нибудь, пожалуйста. Um, uh, question, uh, one chance, do you have any festivals that are devoted to Russian culture uh, in your country? Uh, there is quite a disturbance. Can you repeat it again? Is there anything that you celebrate in India ever devoted to Russian culture? That's a good question. Indian delegation. Uh, so I live in South Bombay uh, for a, quite a lot of time span in the year. Uh, there we have this prom and every year it changes its theme. Last year, the theme of this prom was the, I suppose, Moscow's Golden Mask Festival. So, uh, I believe, yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> the feathery masks. Great, great. Any, any uh, questions? I have a about the festival uh, that we have in Moscow right now. Uh, it is in the park Sarit tonight calls the exhibition Incredible India, A View from Russia, uh, which tells how over the course uh, of several centuries, starting with Afanasy Nikitin's walk across the seas in the 15th century and ending with friendly ties between the USSR and India in the 20th century, the image of this mysterious country took shape in Russian culture. Great. Any any last question from the Indian side? 
Yes, so I have one. Yeah. So recently, while studying for Indian Russian relation, I learned about Catherine the Great. Uh, and one of the points was she had ordered to translate Bhagavad Gita in Russian in 1788. What else about Catherine the Great in Russia is known that that gave her the title Catherine the Great? Because how much research I've done, she was not even from Russian origin. Ребят, кто может коротко сказать историческую справку о том, чем была знаменита Екатерина Великая, даже с учетом того, что она не являлась по происхождению чисто русским человеком этнически? Кто кратко может сказать ее основные достижения в российской истории? We can have the different students answering it so that everybody gets a chance. Don't be shy. Пожалуйста, может быть, педагоги кто-то смогут ответить. Any other schools from Russian uh, side? Well, in this case, I think we will note that question is the best one of the session, and we will try to answer it before we start the chess tournament next time. When... Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so Gaurika, we can move ahead, I guess, for the feedback session. Yes. Right? Yes, so yes. from here, we move ahead for the feedback session, where we look forward that the session which we... Uh, we What did you get uh, on both the sides? What, what did we learn from this particular session? So let's begin from the Russian delegation. If anybody would like to give a short feedback about the takeaway from this session. Друзья, организатор предлагает российской стороне в первую очередь высказать свое мнение. Кто что хочет, что он вынес из сегодняшнего мероприятия, что понравилось. Что показалось интересным? В двух-трех словах. Одна-две минуты. Пожалуйста, поднимайте руку и выступайте. And some new inventions, uh, educational systems, and it comes to my mind that it is pretty great that we are friendly to each other, and we want to improve the technologies, our education, and do something together. So I hope that in the future, uh, the situation will be better, and we still be friendly with you, and so on. Anyone from the Indian delegation side, a feedbacks for the takeaway of this session? Uh, I think uh, the main uh, event uh, really shows how Indian culture and Russian culture are really different, but we have something in common at the same time. And we have uh, to worry, to keep peace on our, in the world and uh, be like uh, true blood brothers, even though we're different races. Race. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I think we're, we should be united together. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, you know, for this wonderful uh, messages which you all are sharing from the Russian delegation side. I look forward the same from the Indian delegation. Anyone would like to give the feedback? Indian delegation? Don't hesitate, please. Yes, yes, Riza, go ahead. Yeah, so I found this session in the relations between Russia and India. And I personally got to know a lot more about the Russian culture and the various ways peace has been mediated among various countries. And I was also able to have a nice conversation with um, various Russian people. So it's, uh, it's a great session. 
great 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 there is also uh, someone from the russian delegation who has put the hand up anyone from the russian delegation there is one person who has put the hand up uh, vadim if you can read кто кто то ещё поднял руку из россиян это белоруссия школа 93 город минск пожалуйста Can you can you put a little volume up? But, uh, добавьте немножко звука, пожалуйста, вас не слышно. Или говорите ближе к микрофону. Well, they tried their best anyway. <laughs> okay, Kefira, you can say Kefira. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to say that um, the session was really in like it was really interesting because you know the Russian uh, country and our country we have a lot of differences between us, but the way that we came together and we both um, presented our ideas on peace and it really showed how much we actually have in common. So it was a great sense of brotherhood that I got from the session. Okay. Uh. to be to be on 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 the uh, this platform yes uh, there is always a differences we see uh, at the bilateral relations or the multilateral relations at 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 the global level but i would like to say this in this podium that we uh, as an indians have been sh sharing a very very good relation with with russians and the, the confidence uh, and and the trust between the india and russia has been always always uh, like a solid stone yes and and we look forward that this this continue for the years to come uh, any any more feedback from uh, any student who anyone who would like to raise the hand у кого-то ещё есть что добавить напоследок i guess they are done so should we proceed uh, further for the closing vadim Okay okay Dorika you can take over Yes sir uh, we are heading to both sides i would like the indian delegation dr subnes agent sports and activities and secretary general un veteran peacekeepers association aisp sbia to present his views Thank you thank you Dorika uh, first of all this is the first presentation we are having between the indian delegation and the russian delegation last year we went with the chess competition which we are again going to proceed uh, in the coming month i really thank each one of you to be here to come to share uh, your concepts your thought processes on the various important topics such as international relations geopolitics uh, intercultural uh, aspects conflict peace and conflicts and all this things today's world it is very important that we 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 talk about peace and we share about peace openly it is very important that the more we talk the more we share the ideas the more we connect interculturally or uh, at at the diplomatic level it is going to uh, form a strong pillar of peace in this global world which is very very vital in 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 today's complex uh, geopolitics uh i i would like to quote one uh, by mahatma gandhi ji that is the day the power of love overrules the love of power the world will know peace so it is very important that we share love because if we are able to share love if we are able to share respect if we are able to share trust i think the peace is going to prevail and that is something what each one of us should look forward in this today's world i thank you uh, i i would like to thank uh, uh, from the russian delegation side 
th- this whole successful event would have not been possible without uh, Vadim and of course uh, Vasily. So I really appreciate that you took this efforts and and brought the two delegations together to come up with this wonderful session or related with the International Peace Day. I also wish to thank all the students from the Russian delegation side who are present here, who made an efforts early morning to be here and, and come up with their thoughts, their views, their presentation. So I really appreciate these aspects, not only the students, but the mentors and the teachers of, of the Russian delegation side who have taken such a hard efforts to prepare the students for this particular session. I also wish to thank uh, Melinin Yurevich, though I think uh, was not able to make it, but uh, my, my sincere ap- appreciation and token of love to uh, the guest, the guest uh, who, who was going to be out there. Uh, on the Indian delegation side, I would like to sincerely thank, first of all, Dr. Priya Ahir, ma'am. She, uh, the one who is one of our heads in, in, in Ashoka group of schools. And with that, of course, uh, without management uh, support and all the heads of the various campuses support, it would have not been possible on the Indian delegation side to move ahead with this session. I also wish to thank all the coordinators uh, and the mentors who supported uh, Ashoka Group of School students, the Indian delegation students like Mega, uh, Meda ma'am, Reshma, uh, Simmer ma'am, Sai ma'am, you know, uh, so I really appreciate uh, uh, your support and, of course, the logistic team like uh, the Mangesh, who is present here, Kalyani, who d- gave her coordination. So thank you for all these uh, efforts done by each one of you in making this International Peace Day successful. God bless you all. And we look forward for such uh, sessions more to take place between the Indian delegation and the Russian delegation, not only online, but also offline. So if the Russian delegation would like to visit India in, in any particular month to have uh, a cultural meet or a sports meet or come up with some debates and, and, and uh, uh, discussions. We are very much open for it. So do let us know in, in, in coming future if you are looking forward to visit uh, uh, India. On the similar note, I would also like to say we are also looking forward, the Indian delegation is looking forward to visit Russia in, 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 in coming time. Last year, we our Indian delegation went for the UN, United Nations Geneva office to celebrate the United Nations Peacekeepers Day in the month of May, where they presented the papers on sustainable development goals related with no poverty, uh, quality education, and peace and justice. So we are looking forward for such events to happen where we, not only you as a students, but we as a seniors are learning from, uh, you know, all the sharing of these topics. So thank you so much and God bless you all. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, Honorable Sir. Now I would like the Russian delegation guest speaker, N.A. Sidorenko, head of the Diplomatic Cadet School of the First Moscow Cadet Corps, to give a thank you speech. Vasily, your turn. Yes, Vadim, unfortunately, Sidorenko Nikola Andreevich could not be able to join us. I think we should also add him to his presentation. I would like to ask him to speak to our colleagues and partners from Belarus, Anna Sergeyevna. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Sidorinko is not available at the moment. He's busy with the with the car and stuff. Anyhow, we would like to welcome with the thank you word from our Belarusian colleagues. Добрый день, дорогие друзья. Хочется представить нашу страну, нашу школу мира, которая сегодня присутствует на этом прямом эфире, и нас много, что очень радует. Мы хотим поблагодарить. Uh, перевод вы будете сами делать или вам помочь? Нет, Вадим, вас просим перевести. Okay, тогда, пожалуйста, по два-три предложения. Хорошо. So, uh, dear guests, we welcome you here at the, uh, the School of Peace here in Minsk. Школа мира города Минска приветствует вас на этом uh, прямом эфире. We welcome you at this online session. Хочу поблагодарить за такой 
прекрасный прямой эфир, который организован индийской стороной. И We would like to стороной. thank you for the excellent organization of the event, uh, which has been done on behalf of the Indian delegation. Ведущих с индийской стороны. The host from the Indian side. Ведущих с российской стороны. Василий the host from the Russian side and Vasily personally. И Вадим Евгеньевича Михеева. And me, thank you so much. Мы настолько были приятно удивлены вот таким вот общением, красочными презентациями. Мы много знаем о Дне мира. We are, we are very happy with the warm communication which was done today. We are very much inspired. Наши дети сделали даже для себя какие-то открытия. Новые. Our kids have opened something new for themselves. Потому что не все знают на данный момент новое молодое поколение. The new, the young generation does not know everything. They need to learn. Да, когда был утвержден День мира? Почему колокол мира? Сегодня. Why is it bell of peace when the day itself was established and why it was established? Сегодня мы с этим могли познакомиться. Today we got to learn about it. Всех школ мира Беларуси мы благодарим вас за то, что вы устроили нам такой прекрасный праздник. On behalf of all schools of peace from Belarus, we would like to thank you for the event which we organized. Миру мир наш основной лозунг. Peace to the world. It's our main Slogan. Спасибо. Thank you. I would like to invite V. Mikhev, veteran peacekeeper, international coordinator of movement of young peacemakers and schools of peace and member of the board, assistant to the president of the UN MOWMM to share their thoughts. Thank you so much. Well, uh, welcome again, everyone, and thank you so much for the hard working. Uh, thank you for the excellent organization of the event. On behalf of all members of the Russian Association of UN Peacekeepers, I would like to thank you for the indifference which you are showing. This indifference is actually about us. If we will not interest ourselves in understanding what is sustainable peace, what needs to be done to reach it, then it will, the, the world will remain hostile, but we do not want to live in a hostile world. Uh, more than 10 years ago, I enjoyed serving for peace together with Indian brothers, brothers in peace. We all were wearing the same blue berets, the blue scarves, and until, or sorry, and since those days, we have become brothers and friends forever. As we say, once a peacekeeper is always a peacekeeper. What I have seen and what I have heard today has poured a lot of honey over my heart. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for sharing your understanding of the importance of the event, the day itself, the International Day of Peace. Why is it so important? Your own approach in, uh, in reaching the sustainable peace. Sooner or later, uh, some of you will become peacekeepers also because the world, uh, you know, the history of the world is cyclic. Things are happening. Unfortunately, wars also happen. And it is in our hands to bring peace back to the world. Thank you again for participating in the event. I am so happy that we have enriched the Indo-Russian program of mutual cooperation since this year. I hope that our common events will be more often since now. And let's meet after one month. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, calling P.P. Roenko, General Director of Scientific and Production Center, Peacemaker, Teacher and member of the Governing Council of DDT on Paganka, coordinator in their disciplinary program, movement of young peacemakers and schools of peace, to present a thank you speech. Uh, dear participants, uh, 
for uh, just a second. The uh, participants of our exchange program, I am very grateful for the uh, participant in our uh, in need of uh, our partners from uh, India, uh, Mr. Danish uh, Mangesh and the uh, head of uh, Ashoka Group School and uh, all uh, college and uh, studies uh, as well as our college from Belarus. Uh, and uh, Russia. I excellently thank uh, all the young peace builders, uh, school children, and cadets from our countries uh, who uh, filled today uh, today's uh, event uh, with their bright and uh, mindful speech. Um, I expressed the hope that. Uh, delegation from India and Belarus will be able to visit uh, Russia, uh, personally get uh, accounted uh, with the uh, activists from uh, Russian Young Peace uh, Builder Movement, uh, exchange uh, uh, experience in educational partners, and uh, we will also be able to visit India and Belarus uh, on uh, a return visit. Uh, thank you for much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sir, for your memorable words. Before we close the floor, it's time to make lifetime memories and carry with us a group picture as evidence of the International Peace Day Union. All the students, all, all the mentors are requested to keep their uh, cam on. And we look forward for a beautiful smile. Большая просьба всем включить свои камеры, отключить микрофоны и широко улыбаться в камеру. In conclusion, as we mark this International Peace Day, let us remember that com compassion and empathy are the driving forces that unite humanity. Let us join hands to create a world where the dignity and rights of every individual are protected, regardless of the circumstances. Our commitment to a more just and compassionate world starts now, and we are ready to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Thank you. All. I now announce the floor to be adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.